talk about all of those things, so just rest assured I'm going to stick just to tobacco. So this photo up here behind me was taken in 1994. But why, I ask you, is it still important all of these years later? Who are these men and what are they doing? So they are eight tobacco executives and they are swearing at a US congressional hearing that nicotine is not addictive. One after the other, they stood up and raised their hands and said, no sir, nicotine is not addictive. No sir, nicotine is not addictive. This built on years of lies and deception by the tobacco industry about the harms or denying the harms caused by their products. It was then, it has been so since the 1950s, and it is still today. Whoops, we've jumped a slide for some reason. So, some of you may recognise at least one of these products that's in that hand. What do they have in common? They're both cigarettes. One is a tobacco cigarette and one is an e-cigarette. The tobacco industry invests in both of these industries. They invest in tobacco and in e-cigarettes and they sell them. They're both very damaging to the environment. So cigarette butts are the most littered um, item in the world. Five trillion tobacco butts, cigarette butts, are cast into the environment every year. They have toxic chemicals that leak in, leach into our environment and they're not biodegradable and take about 15 years to break down. E-cigarettes, on the other hand, also have toxic chemicals that leach into the environment. They also have plastic waste. They have tech waste that increases through the lithium ion batteries that they have. Now, both of these products have hundreds of chemicals in them. And we know now, or we've known for many years, that uh, tobacco, obviously, has a lot of carcinogens in, and that they're really made worse by the combustion. But we're also beginning to be aware that e-cigarettes are also containing carcinogenic substances. So we've got quite a lot of concerns. And someone shouted it out before, I'm not sure who, answering that question. They both contain nicotine. So 30 years ago, when those tobacco executives were swearing, no sir, our products don't have nicotine in, what they were actually doing at the time was manipulating the sticks of cigarettes that were smoked by the young people, the brands that were popular with young people at the time, so that they moved the nicotine up in the cigarette to make them more addictive. But they weren't addictive, remember. Nicotine is not addictive. And what we have now with our e-cigarette is that it's, we don't know how much nicotine is in these products. They're unlabeled, and the tobacco industry, well, the e-cigarette industry, are telling us they don't contain nicotine. If you look at this packet, it says no nicotine. But if you take it down to a testing agency, you will find that more than 80% of these non-nicotine products actually contain <coughs> nicotine. Some of them have as much nicotine in one e-cigarette as 50 cigarettes. So what we're finding is that our young people are becoming addicted to these very, very quickly. And it doesn't matter with, to the tobacco industry whether they actually are addicted to a cigarette or they're addicted to a vape. So, let's just go back in time, seeing as I'm the oldest presenter here today. Take, I'll take you back to 1997 when I excitedly jumped on that plane. Actually, I was really blowing my nose and crying hysterically because I was leaving my three children behind at the airport and then it took me about I don't know 30 minutes and then I was like yes <laughs> I'm off I'm gone I don't have to think about anyone else except myself for six whole weeks um, uh, sorry I digress 
So I went to the US and Canada, but I'm really mostly going to talk about the US in the sort of findings that I had. But when I left, data from our Australian secondary school survey showed that 75% of 16 and 17 year olds actually had tried tobacco. Didn't mean that they were all regular smokers, about 30% of them were regular smokers. And at that time, 30,000, yes, 30,000 Australians were dying from tobacco related diseases. So it was a pretty serious kind of uh, situation. So I chose to go to the Massachusetts Tobacco Control Unit where I was placed for four weeks. So exciting. Um, and as everyone in here who's had a Churchill knows, when you get to where you're going and you're meeting with people, it's such a, an amazing experience because they are all like you. They're all passionate and they're all knowledgeable. And we all, we, none of us go off as a blank slate. We're already an expert in our field. So when I arrived, I was surrounded by epidemiologists, researchers, uh, marketing people who were doing cutting edge um, mass media campaigns. There were fundraisers, policy makers, and lawyers. Good God, had lawyers in their unit who were looking at legislation. And of course, here in Australia, we'd already made good inroads into legislation. We'd started with passive smoking laws, and we'd already started to cut out marketing. I must have given them a lot of confidence because within four days of arriving, they were sending me off to lead a tour of a Danish group of people to look at all the things that they had on offer, which gave me actually a concentrated look at their tobacco program in two days, and it was absolutely amazing. So we were already doing some things in Australia, but since then, we are really world leaders. We have become the world leaders in tobacco control. Despite New Zealand kind of coming along doing some really unusual things, we'll talk about that, we might like to ask me a question about what they're doing. Um, and we're really hoping to become world leaders in e-cigarettes. So in tobacco control, we really know what works. It's one of the most successful public health in interventions across the world where they've had um, a history of it. So for 30 years, we know what has worked and we've done it very successfully. So what have we done here in Australia that has been so successful? We started with legislation, really strong legislation. We banned advertising of tobacco products in mainstream media. So no ads on television, radio, print, billboards, much to the, um, I suppose, ups, <laughs> the, the shock of arts and um, sporting bodies, we took away sponsorship. So you may remember the gold sponsorship of cricket, those of you who are old enough. Some of you before the ads were um, banned may remember the Marlborough Man, very effective ad, getting people thinking they're gonna be some kind of cowboy on the, out in the outback. Or Virginia Slims to slim you down. Or Peter Stuyvesant, which was the jet setting. You, if you smoked them, you were sure to be flying off on an international flight. So we did away with that. So what did the tobacco industry do to counter those kind of things? They put their images on cars, on clothing. They went out to discredit public health people. They um, challenged evidence that their products were causing harm. Really quite unethical kind of practice. So we had the legislation in place. We added tax. Now tax, for many of us in this room, is a double-edged sword. I'm going to run over, by the way, for a minute now that I've started telling anecdotes. Um, <laughs> um, tax is a double-edged sword because the people who can least afford to pay that tax are the people that we're trying to get to quit smoking but it actually causes disadvantage. So we're well aware of that as we kind of introduce that. We've been fabulous in mass media. We've had the most effective campaigns actually using the sorts of things that were on show in Boston when I was there. So they had amazing research. And what we learned from that was that we needed to speak to smokers. 
We needed to go and talk to smokers about what was effective for them. What did they want to see in their ads? And what they told us was that they want to, wanted to see some new things, not just the regurgitated things. What's some new information or new evidence and where can they get help to quit smoking? They don't just want to be left dangling. So what we did was that we actually introduced new ads around um, strokes, heart disease, and then added the quit line ads in to make sure that people could sort of see what, where to go. So we also, of course, in Australia, have the strongest passive smoking laws, which means all of us can go out and eat smoke-free. Unfortunately, some of us are now experiencing um, the, the aroma from the vapes or e-cigarettes when we're out eating. So great inroads into tobacco control. So what we know is we now, in 2023, have very, very low smoking rates amongst young people. The most vulnerable people, though, are still addicted to their tobacco smoking at two, three, and four times greater than the general population. So there's still work to be done in that space because still 20,000 Australians are dying from tobacco-related diseases. That's a lot. Everyone thinks we've done it, but we haven't. 20,000 people, that's a lot of people. And they're the most vulnerable people. So lots of work to keep doing um, our work in that space. And we're always looking for innovations in that space. But I want to turn our thoughts now to the e-cigarettes. It's only a little over 20 years ago that e-cigarettes came onto the market. The tobacco industry in the first instance tried to put the uh, new kid on the block out of business. They're not having this because that's going to affect their business. But a very smart person in the United States invented the term vaping, vapes, to disassociate the harms caused by tobacco smoking. And at that stage, kids were thinking tobacco smoking was smelly, unappealing, socially unacceptable and expensive. So what did they do? Ha, we've got a new market coming. Vapes, clouds of smoke. We added, or they added, flavours and colours. Great packaging. Flavours such as bubblegum, fairy floss. This one's called strawberry kiwi ice. Mango. And off they went with their marketing into Snapchat, TikTok. If you do some searches on TikTok, I don't know if any of you have got a TikTok account, but you might have, you will see there are competitions to see how much vape you can create or where you can vape without your, oh, why is that jumping? Where you can vape without your parents or teachers or adults actually knowing what you're doing. So young people see e-cigarettes as fun, socially acceptable. They are, have no understanding of the harm or the hidden addiction that they're actually getting from the product. So what do we do about something like this? We've got um, about 25% of kids age 12 to 16 actually um, regular users, more in the 18 to 24 year old group. We know that young people who use an e-cigarette are three times likely more to go on to regular smoking. When I was saying before 17%, sorry, 75% of 16 and 17 year olds in 1997 had tried cigarettes and 30% of them were regular smokers, that went down to an all-time low in 2017 at 15%. So 15% of kids were experimenting, have a go. Last year, we've, with the, the lovely thing about science, where are you, David? We've had this same survey measuring children smoking for all these years. So last year, the secondary school survey was conducted again. And what we saw from that was the numbers had gone up to 29%. So kids, had more kids now, are starting to experiment with tobacco smoking. So we absolutely have proof that there's a gateway from e-cigarettes into tobacco smoking. And what we know is that the same strategies that we've used in mainstream tobacco control doesn't work in this environment. 
we have to try something different. So we know that we can't stop the advertising because we can't legislate into TikTok and um, Snapchat and places like that. We don't want to apply a tax because we don't want to normalise e-cigarettes as being something that, you, you know, is just in society. And what we currently have are e-cigarettes being sold in an unregulated market and, we, and illegally, illegally being sold to children under 18. So, dilemma. But what we do know is that we can actually use legislation to disrupt the access to these products. So we've been working with the federal government to say, don't let this just be a market kind of freedom to choose whether you're going to have just status quo as it is at the moment. And thank goodness, Minister Butler has introduced some legislation to the parliament to stop the access of e-cigarettes. So his plan, our plan, <laughs> is to actually get rid of all non-prescription vapes. And you can only get an e-cigarette with a prescription. We're going to get rid of colours, flavours. We're banning single use, so that will also reduce the environmental impact. And we are going to have plain pharmacy packaging. So we're hoping that that passes through um, Parliament shortly. I've been asking you to look at a lot of pictures today, but have a look at this. This is a vape mimicking a child's sippy cup. It's a shocking image, isn't it? So can we believe an industry that says e-cigarettes are marketed at adults who want to quit smoking when you've got this kind of product on the market? When we've got colours and flavours and boxes that say there's no nicotine in a product? So my premise here and my question to you and my ask to you is, when we've got a tobacco industry or a vape industry marketing to children, whose responsibility is it to stop that? And we've heard a lot already this morning around policy and regulation, but also about community. It's our responsibility as a community to stop this, to support our politicians and our legislators to stop this kind of thing, to stamp out children's access to e-cigarettes. And so if you feel that the answer is yes, we have an obligation to do something about this, then I suggest that you reach out to your local politician, have a chat about these cigarettes, because not everyone's on the same page. The tobacco industry have done a fabulous job of actually uh, lobbying their politicians to say, they're just a harm minimisation. We're just trying to stop adults smoking. Don't worry about it. Nothing here, nothing to see here. So I suggesting that we all work together to stop the tobacco industry and the vape industry addicting a new generation of smokers. Thank you. Mm -hmm.